first. How does sunscreen affect this or does it? It does. You can effectively block the vitamin D production in the sunscreen. So what do you recommend? No sunscreen? Not for the length of time that you need for vitamin D production, which isn't very long. If you're getting 20 to 30 minutes a day, then you can put your sunscreen back on. Everybody hear the question about sitting in front of a window in the winter time. In the winter time. Yeah. It will warm you, but probably won't help much with your vitamin D production. Okay. Um, for most of the glasses, they will filter out the B, which is the, the uh, vitamin D stimulating uh, irradiation. Well, you could open the window, but then you could sit outside for that. And, and how long would you need to take supplementation for? If you, if you don't have access to having your blood tested to see what your levels are like? Usually during the winter months when you can't get sunlight exposure. Okay. Rest of your life. Well, if you're living in places that are really cold yeah. in the winter time and you can't, you can do something to show those levels on. Dr. Louise, I'm sorry, the lady Who's next? the lady to the back. Sorry. It's okay. Lady to the back. And then, and then, then to the back. Where can you get vitamin uh, D2? Where can you get vitamin D2? Right down here at the herb shop. <laughs> what? Other places. Sources. Oh, I guess no, you said yeah, sources. D2 at the various health, health stores. You haven't found them? You're talking about not the prescription, but just the over-the-counter D2? Yeah, I think. You, you can get the regular D2. The D2 from Walmart. Yeah. The D2. D2. You mentioned when you were talking about the levels of vitamin D in, in, in the system, you mentioned a level of intoxication. How could you get to a level of intoxication? What, what would be the source for you to obtain so much uh, vitamin D in your system? It was almost at the beginning. Few practitioners ever see this, secondary to unbridled effects of hypercalcemia. The levels must exceed 150 nanograms per ml. In order to produce this, most adults would have to take an excess of 10,000 international units per day for many months or even years, according to what is in the literature. So, I mean, it's, you, can, you can do this, like if you're taking 50,000 international units, you can really then start to step up if you're doing that frequently. But most of the time, like if we're giving 50,000 units a week, that's like what, maybe around 7,000 a day? You're probably not going to see that. I mean, it just it doesn't usually occur. So you have a, a list of the different um, illnesses that we usually see yes. uh, due to vitamin D deficiency. Um, I mean, it's, Obviously, a lifestyle kind of issue, getting enough sunlight. Um, a lot of those diseases you see associations with other things that are lifestyle related, not just sunlight. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe uh, like touch on um, maybe the connection between what we eat and getting the right amount of sunlight? I think it's a very good point that you're making. It's like the commandments, all right? We, we don't keep you know, nine out of 10, okay, or seven out of 10. When God 
made these provisions for our abundant life. You know, John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and life abundantly. He has given us a prescription for healthful, happy, holy living. And it includes all. And so I don't think it would be fair, nor would it be truthful, to say, okay, all of these diseases is just because you're not getting enough sunlight. We know that's not true. In fact, most of the autoimmune disorders and inflammatory disease states are contributed to by other dietary factors, like we talked about yesterday. Meat eating and all of the use of you know, animal foods that are cont contaminated with other viruses, bacteria, hormones, and uh, animal fats. So your point is well made. It's not just this, but this is a contributing factor. And so we need to look at the whole pattern of how we live. And this is where lifestyle interventions are, I believe, um, the answer to these to man's dilemma of diseases, obeying God in every area that he has given us counsel about how to live. Okay, two last questions. Karen and Donna. You mentioned vitamin D3. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were told earlier this week that there's a new form of vitamin D3 mm -hmm. on the market. Is that animal, uh, I'm sorry, plant-based? Is this what you're talking about? I don't believe you, you're talking about a plant-based vitamin D3. We're told yes, we're told that. Who told you? Well, I'll need to talk to that person and maybe learn something. <laughs> Normally, we think of the D3 as from the animal source. Maybe they're coming up with some new things. I don't know, but I haven't. I didn't read about that. I'd be interested if somebody could share that with me. Don. Dr. Grievous, I was told that if we do sunbathe for 15 minutes or so, then we're not supposed to put any water in our body or keep it, uh, not smother it with clothes and so forth, or yeah. what, is, what, what is the suggestion? Well, we don't know this yet, but this is the concern, that since it is fat-soluble, that if you're making it in the skin and then you go and bathe right after a sun bath and you use soap, okay, that will emulsify that, that you could rinse it off. So you're hearing some people say now, don't bathe within 48 hours. Oh. <laughs> 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 don't go from here and, and say that I'm saying that. No, that's what some people are saying. I don't think um, one option that this particular author that I read who said don't bathe, at least don't bathe with soap. In other words, rinse off or do whatever you want to, but don't rinse the larger areas of the body with soap. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But I, I'm, you know, when people are out, they're hot, they're sweaty, yeah, you tell them not to bathe for yeah. 48 hours seems yeah. not so, really so reasonable. So basically, then how long should we wait until we take that I don't have that data. I don't know. I mean, so this, what do you do? Well, I usually, I mean, if I'm going to, I would not bathe for 48 hours, but I may not really use the soap on the, all the other areas of the body. Certain areas you might want to use that, but in the large exposed areas, uh, I don't I don't see that as a problem, you know, of not doing that, you know, on large areas. But I, I do think that there is at least some reason for further investigation into that. I don't know that that's the exact answer, and I don't know that that's the time frame. I've not seen really any good studies. I've seen a man's recommendation about it, but I don't have any data. Okay, thank you, Dr. Let's look at the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency is defined by most experts as when the 25 hydroxy D level, that's, the, that's what we measure, is less than 20. However, when the PTH levels begin to elevate when it falls below the 30 to 40 nanograms per ml. Intestinal calcium transport increased by 40 to 65% in women 